Hi guys, um, welcome to part two of hospital bag packing for when you're going into labour. So I've broken this one down. Um, I, you might see me looking off to the side the odd time, but that's because again, I'm referencing the spreadsheet. I'm like uber organised. So it's got kind of like what I'm wanting, have I got it yet, is it packed, etc. And it's actually got a, like a notes comment column. So um, I've, I just personally find that really handy. It means that as I've kind of packed, as I've collated stuff as I've went along, I've been able to kind of keep a track of it without having to constantly go through like the suitcase that I've got. So we'll start off with general items, then we'll go on to toiletries and I'll finish off with clothes. Hopefully you've already watched part one, which is also available both on my Instagram and YouTube, um, which includes like what you need to pack for the baby and also any kind of like drinks or snacks that you might need. So we'll just start off um, for the hospital bag for you. Um, because that is the most critical. Your husband can always bring more stuff for the baby. You want to make sure that you've got all the things you possibly could think of wanting or needing to make you feel comfortable in labour. So with that in mind, first thing I've started off with is birth plan. Now, I've heard conflicting things about birth plans, um, whether they're actually looked at, depending on the midwife or doctor, you know, have you been consultant led? Has there been any engagement with the hospital up to now? Um, and there's a lot of templates that you can find online as well. The kind of one that I have went for is really just a one page, kind of almost bullet points um, of what I'm kind of wanting before, during and after labour. So I will take this and give it to the midwives when I go into labour. I've also got a spare one in this book just in case as well. And I've also emailed it to myself so that I've got one electronically if need be. But that covers off things like the environment, fetal monitoring, examinations, um, also any kind of like drug preferences if you want to be asked, if you want to have to ask for them, etc. Skin to skin, cord, placenta, vitamin K jab that the baby gets straight after birth, feeding as well, formula, breastfed, do you want support, have you brought colostrum? And just even going down the, the route of, I'm going to potentially ask for laxatives um, for coming home as well. Because one thing that I keep getting messages on is one thing that a lot of people don't tell you about is that first food after labour. So sorry to drop the tone, but very important. Similarly, I'll cover off some stuff for if you're going to tear or get an episiotomy. That's something to consider as well. All right, so birth plan is number one. Number two, I'm going to take my hypnotherapy book. So I uh, undertook a course with Lindsay of Born This Way Hypnotherapy. And one of the best things I've done, um, Jonathan included as well. So it's a full antenatal education and it also covers off like breathing techniques, how to stay calm. But for me, the biggest thing generally is around what to expect and also what your rights are. So what can you ask? And pretty much it's everything. It's your labour, it's your birth, it's your baby. You have total control. So it's that empowerment element that I really got from it that was beneficial. In here, it covers off kind of like affirmations. It's got a script for Jonathan if he wants to speak to me in a certain way, especially as we get to the transition stage of labour, which is the bit that they portray in movies as being the, I can't do this anymore. It's not that long. It's actually a few minutes long, but they love to dramatise it, don't they? Um, it's also got like massage in it that he's going to do like on me during labour. So... Um, he's been referencing it and you'd think he'd know it by now, sadly not. Um, so he just, you know, well, typically I, imagine, I can only imagine how he's going to feel in that situation as well. So having the book to reference will probably be quite good for him. As such, I'm just going to bring this up because it's in general items, albeit it's in my toiletry bag, is massage oil. So that is for Jonathan to use on me, pregnancy and labour massage oil. I got that with my nine maternity, um, maternity clothes package they actually packed a little bit of the massage oil in there so quite a handy little travel size perfect for taking to the hospital um right big one look how long that cable is all right it's one thing i get told big long 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 cable charger you will need your phone um 
don't know what scenario or you'll be going into labour in, right? But you don't know how long you're going to be in there for. So you want a charger. I'm also taking a backup charger, albeit that one isn't so long. But backup, you also got to consider your partner. If they're with you for any prolonged period of time, if something happens afterwards. Ideally, they want to be bringing their own in their own bag, but just in case they don't. Earphones. So I've got earphones that plug into my phone. I'm also going to take probably my wireless like earphones as well, just in case. And so you see, I've got a little bag here. I'm like putting all the electronics in this bag. My last item is TENS machine. Right, so that comes with pads that you stick onto yourself and it generates an electric current which can act as pain relief, right? So I got that from Baby Care Tens, and it was the OB Tens machine. And um, we got spare pads as well to test it. I made Jonathan test it on himself. Get your birth partner to do it. He said it's pretty, pretty powerful. So in the early stage of labor, when I'm attempting to stay at home when it comes on, this is what I'll be using as the first stage of pain relief. Um, iPad as well, I've actually not got this with me because it's in my bedroom, but you want something, I mean you can use your phone if you want, but again you can actually alternate between, so say you need to charge your phone up, it means you've got your iPad, download, so don't guarantee that you're going to have internet signal, so maybe download some series episodes from Netflix, Prime or whatever, you can get that onto your device and you've got it, otherwise download a few books and that's an option as well. This was a good hint, and I mentioned this in my first video, right? So, when I was talking about the drinks, is a sports bottle and also a bottle with a built-in straw, right? And you want this because instead of having to tip up a bottle of like, the Volvic I was talking about, you literally, I feel like I'm teaching you how to use a straw. <laughs> um, it, it's come recommended by so many people that it's just it's so much easier than having to tip up. So that's one thing. This has a dual purpose. Um, it could be covered within general items for drinking. And I'm going to tell you the second one, right? But similar reason, you can just drink. Second one is, I don't know if you've maybe heard about like a pity bottle or a beady bottle, right? And you know, I mentioned tearing or an episiotomy or if you need to get stitches. Basically, if you go for a pee following giving birth and you've had to get stitches or anything's ripped, or being cut or anything, you can imagine the sting, right? So you can go online on eBay and Amazon and buy a specifically branded Perry or Bidi, like Bidi bottle. However, you can just use one of these. I tried to use, uh, I was I was testing it, yes I was, <laughs> a jug and you can't really get like the angle right. So I, I've been told by quite a few people, you actually want that kind of like project, projectile jet which is what a sports bottle is ideal for. So you'll have plenty of them if you're going to pack like the Lucozade or isotonic drinks that I'd mentioned in my last video. So handy for both drinking and labour and also for use afterwards. So keep that in mind. COVID. So what you're going to need during COVID times, don't forget your masks. Unfortunately, I say unfortunately, um, it's, it's everywhere I suppose now, you are needing to wear a mask. So basically they're asking that you wear masks around about the corridor, going to the toilet, anywhere else. When you're in active labour, they don't expect you to wear one. Your partner will be asked to wear one or your birth partner will be asked to wear one. So make sure you go with some. They probably will have them in the hospital, but just be prepared. Um, I'm also taking eye mask and earplugs. So a tip I got from Lindsay, hypnobirthing teacher was if you're driving in the car going to the hospital, you kind of want to zone out. So you don't want any adrenaline, you don't want to be distracted because that can inhibit how effective labour and your contractions are. So actually wearing this to kind of just zone out, listen to your music, listen to your hypnobirthing tracks on the way to the hospital is a good idea. Also, if, you're, if you give birth at say five in the morning and you're wanting to have a sleep through the day, this is also going to come in handy. Also, I'm precious with noise, so I've taken a couple of sets of earplugs. You'll only really be in a ward with other people when you're in the recovery room. So that can be two, four, six people. Um, when you're in the labour suite, you have your own private room, but thereafter, these will come in handy. 
just going to check my list uh the only other oil or the only other thing that i've got really is like a temple oil so other couple of options you might want to do is for like the environment so if you want to take like electric candles um you can do i'm also going to probably take my alexa or like a bluetooth speaker because as i said you're in a room yourself um for labor so you can play what music you want you can set it up as you want dim the lights they won't encourage actual candles hence why i'm saying electric candles um and also just kind of like any aromatherapy you might want as well you might want to take along with you so that's what i've got for the general items i'm already at 10 minutes i can talk for britain can't i so i better hurry up um and what we're going to get on to next if i just give myself a wee bit of time to kind of lay them out so they're easy to hand is toiletries one more thing i was going to mention before we got on to toiletries was i have bought an embroidered cord, cord clamp reason for that is the big plastic clamp can both dig into the baby but also dig into me whilst breastfeeding so i've decided to go with um a cord clamp which i'll show you in probably one of the videos later after i've given birth or in a post on instagram so moving on to toiletries starting with the basics i am taking small toothpaste and manual toothbrush i will pack my electric toothbrush but i put this in just in case i don't remember hairbrush with numerous bobbles and i've also got like a like a makeup thing to kind of put my hair right back if it's pissing me off at all probably a good thing to do one of the big things that they say that you should take is maternity pads now these came in the scottish baby box otherwise i would recommend that you buy just overnight pads um from boots they don't need to be branded just heavy flow nighttime pads um and as i said these come in the scottish baby box so if you've not specifically got them know that you'll get that about probably week 34 or 35 and you know you've got enough there to take to the hospital for any kind of cut or tear or anything you can hear kyra she's going mad guarding the house she takes it seriously i've got a couple of things that were recommended so aloe vera gel now you, these things you can put actually in the pads themselves or on yourself or a combination of both another tip i got was to actually put the pads with these things in the freezer and then use it and it's like a cold compress that gives ultimate relief so yeah aloe vera you'll know this from getting burnt you know on holiday remember the days um and the, the soothing effects of that arnica so i've got arnica gel you can also get this in tablet form but it helps with bruising and also a thing that was seriously recommended was spritz for bits from the expert midwife so i've got all those things to go alongside the maternity pads in the toiletries in my toiletries bag i'm also going to be taking all my tablets so you need to continue taking your multivitamins and your pregnancy tablets i've got metazole for um heartburn it also happens during labor i'm also probably going to buy some gaviscon tablets or alternatively buy gaviscon yourself if you know you like the mint for example because i hear they give only the aniseed out in hospital um metformin for me um i've got pcos and i was encouraged by my doctor to continue taking them i take my own paracetamol i'm also just putting it in the bag so that i know i've got some at hand quite quickly if and when my contractions start and i want to start with that iron tablets continuing on with them and that's all the different tablets then your basic, obviously your deodorant, your roll-on. Depending on what time of year it is, although I got this from the expert midwife, so I'm going to take it. It's Keep Your Cool, so it's a cooling spray. I've heard from a lot of people it can be extremely warm. If it is in summer, definitely recommend this or let a small electric fan. Again, COVID times, spritz for clean hands. So that is just like a hand cleanser. So you, they're in hospital anyway, but it means you've got your own. Um, I am also taking both Dr. Pawpaw, although this is like red, so I'd probably look as if I'm trying to go for a night out whilst in labour, and Vaseline, and I've also got another one in my little handbag, because if you are on gas and air, it dries out your mouth significantly, and this is one of the big ones, in addition to like the hard-boiled sweeties that I mentioned in the previous video, that's good if you're going to be on gas and air. Little individual body wash shampoo and conditioner i'm also taking my face halo and some cleanser um if you want to wear makeup in labor you can can do i've not included makeup in my bag 
totally up to you. Nipple balm and nipple pads. So I've got these ones free actually out of the Emma's Diary bags. Um, you can get them, so if you sign up to the Emma's Diary app, log in and get, you can get free like, is it mum to, or baby, bump to baby and like mums to be bags, pick them up in Argos, Boots, etc. And you get like freebies and different vouchers in them. So I'm just going to take these ones to use them up. Breast pads and nipple bar. I also wear contact lenses, so cannot forget contact lenses, case, this is a spare set because you never know, contact lens solution and glasses, right? So that is critical for me. I really need to remember that and I'm taking a spare set just in case because I'm not a huge fan of my glasses, um, but I'm taking them just in case. And the only other thing that I'm gonna mention but I'm not gonna take out is because it's in the freezer is colostrum. So I have harvested colostrum, which is like pre-milk. You can harvest that safely from about 36, 37 weeks pregnant. And I'm gonna take that in in case for any reason during the golden hour, i.e. right after birth, I cannot breastfeed my baby. Jonathan can do skin to skin and give him express colostrum instead of having to give him formula. If you want more information on that, you can go onto my Instagram. I've actually got a highlight on it. Um, so at Lauren's Cravings and I have a highlight on the benefits and what, what you know, colostrum is um, and why you would harvest it prior to giving birth and take it to the hospital with you. If you want a video on YouTube about it, just give me a wee shout or leave a comment. I'm more than happy to give you some more information. So that's us kind of whistled our way through the list for the toiletries. And the last thing we need to get on to is clothes. Please. So the last thing we're going to go on to is clothes and shoes. <laughs> she ain't going to go barefoot. So obviously you're going to go and rock up in an outfit. That's fine. That's one thing. A um, couple other essential items that I think it's probably worth mentioning. So comfort comes first. I put it here. House coat. Especially if you're in and out of the water or wanting to go to the shower using something a wee bit cosier that reminds you of home, house coat, and also some slippers. So I've taken some nice cosy slippers. Mum got me these from John Lewis. They've not been used actually, so they'll be used for the first time in labour. I've also got myself some flip flops, apparently quite good for slipping on and off quickly. But again, also if I'm hoping for a water birth, so it keeps my slippers from getting wet. Um, sleeping, so because I'm wanting to breastfeed nighties with kind of like button down here were recommended. So I've just got these off Amazon. So nice baggy nighties. They say try and stay away from trousers because you don't know, one, if you're going to be cut or torn. Also, if you're going to end up needing to go for an emergency C-section. So anything that might rub the scar down there, you just don't want to even have to think about it. So I was recommended nighties and also the button down because I'm hoping to breastfeed. So I have two of them. And I've also got kind of like one baggy oversized t-shirt just in case like baby's sick or anything at all. So that doesn't have necessarily the button down, but that is a, like a UK size 24, so it's really baggy. It kind of hangs off my shoulder a wee bit, so I can easily get something out if, if I need to. I've also download, downloaded, that is pregnancy being right there. Wow, I have ordered and got big pants. So obviously you might have some maternity pants they are really good you want something that's going to come up in case you end up with a c-section scar so not kind of rubbing into you cotton ideally black because there's going to be a lot of bleeding postpartum hence the maternity pads that i mentioned so i've got a pack of these were a pack of four each and i've pinched one out there so i've got seven um you don't know how long you're going to be in for your partner can bring in more but i was encouraged to take probably like six plus pairs of pants in addition to that, I've got maternity bras. So I've got some, I've got some new ones and I've actually just put some other ones in here and I've packed four again, just in case there's any kind of like leakage or spillage or anything or one gets wet. So I'm probably actually going to wear one going in, but I'm likely going to also wear one in the pool. Um, you can wear different things in the pool. A lot of women end up getting totally naked. It's totally up to you, but obviously bottom half, you won't have anything on. You can wear a vest top, 
I have quite a big chest, so I want some support. So I'll probably just wear one of these kind of like maternity bras that can unclip quite easily for like skin to skin and feed the baby straight away. I've got a couple of pairs of socks. So lighter socks and nice big wintery pair. Um, don't know how cold it's going to be in hospital. So, and also just for ones to come home in. I've got a baggy pair of trousers. So almost like harem pants, again, just for ease of comfort and wear, and they kind of come up a wee bit. I've got a couple of pairs of maternity leggings. Again, just aim for comfort, 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 comfort. I have a couple of vest top options. So whether that's for pyjamas, but also if I want to wear one in the pool, I've got this kind of like small crop top one um, that I was thinking might be a possibility. But to be fair, if I'm wearing that, I might as well just wear my bra is my thinking. A uh, couple of maternity tops, so kind of like maternity tops that kind of like are nice and floaty as a going home um, outfit. And if you have any other items you want to wear going home specifically, but please keep in mind you don't know how your labour is going to go. You don't know how you're going to feel down there, if you're potentially needing to go for a C-section. But also don't worry about it too much because your partner can also go home and get you more stuff or something else if need be. So that's pretty much everything I have on my hospital bag list. I hope you have found it helpful. I know it's been quite a long video, but um, I found it quite useful to watch some of these and also just kind of see lists. So if you want just to look at a list of everything I've listed in this video, you can look at the description box on YouTube and it will list everything that I have included in the video that will be going in the hospital bag. So let me know what you think, press like, subscribe if you fancy any more of these videos and just leave a comment and let me know what you think. And thank you so much for listening and I will speak to you soon. Bye.